Good afternoon everyone. Today we are going to talk about congenital tuberculosis. Congenital tuberculosis is something so rare that uh, we actually never suspect that a baby born could be having TB. It's a very serious form of neonatal TB and it results from hematogenous spread of mycobacterium tuberculosis to the fetus. How does that occur? I will come to that later. If it's not recognized and not treated on time, it has a very high mortality rate. So this is something that we should keep a very strong suspicion about, especially in countries where there's a high TB endemicity. Its incidence is less than two per 100,000 live birth globally, but it's got a higher risk in TB endemic areas like India, South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa. What are the factors that lead to maternal to child transmission of TB? When the pregnant lady has reactivation of TB or she has miliary TB or she has genital TB, she's immunosuppressed like an HIV positive mother or there's a poor antenatal care in the mother. So how does the TB spread from the baby or from the mother to the baby? Uh, MTB from the mother will infect the placenta and from there there'll be hematogenous spread via the umbilical vein. So when it spreads through the placenta, through the umbilical uh, vein, the seeding is going to happen in the fetal liver. So the primary complex will be in the liver. Sometimes at the time of birth, uh, there may be aspiration of the amniotic uh, fluid, especially if the mother has genitourinary TB. And that can lead to lung TB or GI TB. So say for example, I'll just describe you this case. This child came to us at three months of age. He was born preterm. He had been in various NICUs for treatment of his lung condition, prematurity, heart disease. And uh, everybody, from the time he was born, he had this right upper zone pneumonia, which uh, people thought that this is a congenital pneumonia. But even after three months, this pneumonia had not resolved. And uh, he was uh, then underwent a bronchial alveolar lavage and that found MTB on gene expert and that was RIF sensitive. What was most important is the antenatal history in the mother. The mother uh, was unable to deliver uh, and then she had undergone investigations for the same and they found that she had a bilateral hydrocelphings and a right ovarian complex cyst. She underwent a laparoscopic ovarian cystectomy with a bilateral salpingectomy. The histopath from the salpings showed a chronic granulomatous inflammation. Being in India, the most common uh, granulomatous inflammation is TB. However, she was not treated for TB. Subsequently, she got pregnant and uh, during her pregnancy also TB was never picked up in the lady. Postnatally, after this child was detected to have TB, the mother underwent investigations and then she was found to have TB on her chest x-ray. She has uh, miliary shadows, there's a CP angle that is blunted that shows there's a pleural effusion and she had a bulky mediastinum. Her USG pelvis was normal, so there was no genitourinary TB and expected because this child came with a pneumonia, so it's probably from the infected amniotic fluid. And then subsequently, after the child was started on first-line TB treatment, the mother was started on first-line TB treatment. So how do you suspect uh, congenital TB? Uh, Cantwell has described a diagnostic criteria and you can suspect, make a diagnosis of congenital TB only if you have these criteria being fulfilled. That means there has to be a TB lesion in the infant plus one of the following that the lesion should be at least one week within the first week of life which our child had he had a pneumonia that was there right from birth the primary complex should either be in the liver or it should be in the lung but there should be a tb infection of the placenta or the maternal genital tract and there's exclusion of postnatal transmission from close contacts tested negative now in our patient the mother was already having a TB of the salphings which was missed so she had a genitourinary TB plus the infant had uh, pneumonia right from birth so this tells you that this was congenital TB how do these children with congenital TB present they will usually present with the area that is involved so if the liver is involved they'll come to you as hepatosplenomegaly 
if the lung is involved they'll come to you as uh, respiratory distress or a pneumonia fever is obviously going to be there with tb they will have failure to thrive they will not put on weight rarely cns may get involved if it spreads and it causes disseminated tb skin regions are rare how do you make a diagnosis just like any other tb you make a microbiological and a radiological diagnosis whenever you have a liver palpable and you're suspecting congenital tb do an ultrasound that will show hepatosplenomegaly or you'll find a primary complex with the portal lymph nodes getting involved a chest x-ray will show miliary pattern depending on the area that is involved you'll do a microbiological diagnosis so if you have a pneumonia as an r patient you will do a gastric aspirate or you will do a bronchoalveolar lavage and send for the cb net and the cultures if placenta is available send that placenta for histopath and a tb pcr and then always screen the mother so you may need to do an endometrial biopsy or you may have to do sputum examination and do a microbiological diagnosis what would be a differential diagnosis of a child who's born with congenital tb obviously the first thing is neonatal sepsis you may consider because of hepatosplenomegaly congenital group of infections like torch infections with failure to thrive you may consider metabolic disorders langerhans cell histiocytosis and rarely it may mimic a congenital pneumonia treatment if it's rifampicin sensitive it's going to be first line tb treatment as we do for other patients INH rifampicin pyrazinamide be a little careful of using ethambutol because you are not able to check the eye in these patients so whether there is color blindness occurring and all that you will not be able to identify so be very careful if you are using ethambutol and the treatment duration for congenital tb is almost 9 months to 1 year it's not 6 months therapy so you have 2 months of intensive phase plus 7 to 10 months of a continuation phase for uh, drug resistant tb again the treatment is as per the guidelines so you will be using the second line drugs again it will be a longer oral regimen and not a shorter regimen how do you prevent it uh, screen the pregnant women for tb symptoms and risk factors and in endemic areas you may also consider doing a routine antenatal screening with a tuberculin skin test or an igra in case of maternal tb or unexplained neonatal illness do a placental histopathology and please make sure you do not give a bcg vaccine until and unless you have ruled out active disease in the patient prognosis wise it remains high mortality if untreated and with timely anti tb treatment and icu support survival improves however there are long term sequelae like neurodevelopmental delay hearing loss especially if the cns is involved so the key message here is maintain a high suspicion in neonates when there is a non resolving pneumonia as was seen in our patient there is hepatosplenomegaly or sepsis like illness especially if maternal tb is suspected and early treatment with anti tb treatment is necessary diagnosis often requires a combination of clinical radiological and microbiological evidence so you need to uh, have uh, nucleic acid tests being done early and you will have to have your neonatologist infectious disease specialist getting involved into the treatment in our patient we gave hrz and levoflox we did not use ethambutol because of the eye toxicity So these are the references that one could go through if uh, one wants to know more about congenital TB and thank you very much